This is a destructive generation, a generation where if a person has talent, he can become a hero, but his talent is the rarest in the world. His name is Yuan, he is level zero and has no profession. A girl named Su Yun with level 22 and a healer profession said that basically garbage with no signs of leveling up is a weakling. Yuan asked the man how much does one trip cost. He grinned and replied that those who can survive get one million, those who die get 500,000, and those who run away get nothing. To survive, he can become cannon fodder and earn money. But he never expected it to change his life. He activated his hidden profession, a card player. He went on a rather strange journey to level up. People beat monsters, and he plays cards and easily becomes the strongest in the world. A huge monster grabbed the guy and looked at Yuan. He said that there shouldn't be S-rank monsters in this difficulty dungeon. He's so lucky. In front of him was a monster with a level above 99, and it had a huge red eye on its chest. Around Yuan were the corpses of his comrades. He was left alone in a stalemate, and this time he really can die here. His face filled with horror. He would definitely die here. He screamed that he had to kill it no matter what. The monster stretched out a huge hand towards him, and Yuan ran to attack. Eighteen years ago, great changes took place in the world. The real world was connected to otherworldly dimension gates. Those who have talent go through the dungeon, kill monsters, and take treasures. After that, they get the title of hero. They are called hunters. And those who have no talent are left with nothing. Yuan was looking for worthwhile items in a junkyard in the slums. He picked up an unfinished hunter's medicine that cost 20 bucks. After that, he picked up a ring without amplifying properties. This garbage he can only sell for 10 bucks. He sighed and said there wasn't much to find here today. He is one of those who have no talent. He walked down the street and wondered if that would be enough for him to buy food. He ran into some guy and apologized. The guy turned around and recognized him. He put his hand on his shoulder and asked if this is not Yuan. What a coincidence. Yuan hissed angrily and waved them off, saying that he didn't have time to play with them. They'll talk next time. The guy laughingly took the bag away from him and said that he would see what treasures he had found today. Yuan wanted to run up to him, but one of the boy's friends blocked his path and Yuan asked him to return it. He said irritably that they should not anger him or he would make them pay for it. The hooligans gave him a surprised look and immediately began to beat him. The guy asked, would he make them pay? Let him not be so self-confident, he's just worthless garbage, another hooligan asked. Did he lose his brains or what? A man with glasses approached them and told them not to kill him, because if he dies, who will return the money to him? The bullies called him the boss, and he approached Yuan and asked if he remembers how his father died. Yuan was beside himself with rage at the sight of the boss. He remembered how his father hanged himself and he found his body. The boss said that he borrowed money from them at interest in the hope of turning him into a hunter. His father bet everything on him. Now it is his debt. Hadn't he heard that the debts of parents must be paid by their children? The boss said that to be honest, his father died through his fault because he was born garbage. Yuan got angry and grabbed his tie. He hit him and his glasses fell to the floor. The boss asked if he even understood what he was doing. Yuan tensed up and at the same moment, he was hit by the boss's bodyguard. The boss told him to look at himself. He made Lanbo do it. What if he killed him with one hit? He put his foot on it and asked if he didn't know. With his status, he won't be able to damage him. The boss's name is Jia Chun. He is level 20 and is a boxer. Unlike him, he is a true hunter. Yuan asked him to shut up and Jia Chun said he really looked like trash. Yuan shouted that he would pay him back. Jia Chun answer asked, Will he do it by collecting this rubbish from landfills? Can he even pay him back before he dies? Yuan asked him to give him one month. If he does not return the money, he will give him his liver and kidney. But if he pays on time, he wants him to kneel before his father's grave and admit his mistakes. Jia Chun was surprised and agreed to this. He said that if you add all the interest, he needs to pay 70 million. He has one month. He is looking forward to good news from him. He heard that people are recruiting scouts. Let him go and try. Who knows? Maybe he is the king of garbage. He can help out with something worthwhile. In this world, the strong survive and the weak are destined to die. But now, if he wants to become strong, he needs to raise a lot of money. He came to a place where they recruit people in the dungeon. He loudly placed a dungeon recruitment notice on the table, saying that you can get one million for one trip. Nothing is required of them. They are responsible for their actions. He shouted that he wants to enter the dungeon. He asked the man how much money he could earn. The man said that those who can survive will receive one million, those who die will receive 500,000, and those who run away will receive nothing. Yuan thought that in order to fully repay the debt, 
He just needed to go through the dungeon seventy times. He answered the man that he would not run away, much less die. The man said that since he was so inspired, then let him go and mark himself there. Yuan was glad to be accepted and left. The guy asked a man named Bai Tuan, Is this rubbish from the slums? Bai Tuan looked at the joyful Yuan and replied that such idiots are the best cannon fodder. Doesn't he think so? What is paid in case of death is a lie. They're only here to be human shields. It is to their advantage. After a while, they came to the gates of the dungeon. Bai Tuan stood in front of the gate and said that before that, he would like to make an announcement. In addition to their team members, they have several newcomers and three temporary allies with them today. Yuan wondered if he wasn't even in the attacking force. Bai Tuan said he hoped everyone could get along. The rules are the same. The reward of any member who breaks the raid will be cancelled. The guy said don't let them talk like cannon fodder means anything. The other guy agreed with him and said that cannon fodder should only be used as bait or human shields. Yuan listened to them irritably, and a girl called out to him. She asked if he knew how to use the abyss system. In response, he asked what system. She replied that the abyss system was based on Shenzhou technology. It is a system that makes it possible to see the status of other people. Before Yuan appeared her characteristics, and the characteristics of a girl named Su Yun, she was a level 22 healer. She sighed and said that mostly garbage with no signs of leveling up is a weakling. She wished him good luck and told him to keep working hard to survive. Bai Tuan said that when the crossing gate appeared, the temporary allies would go in front, the tankers would follow, and the support would stay behind. He asked, did they understand everything? The participants of the raid chorus confirmed his words. One of the temporary allies asked a man named Lao Ju if he was okay. He confirmed his words and said that he could not retreat now. He had two daughters whom he needed to feed. The man said that his wife was sick, so he needed money. If they don't get it, then it turns out that they risked their lives in vain? Lao Ju agreed with him and asked Yuan, Is this his first time? He confirmed his words, and the man said that he looked so calm, so he thought that he already had experience. The man said that they would try to survive and wished them good luck. The gate opened and they entered the dungeon. Yuan was very serious because his goal is one million, someone asked him. Doesn't it seem strange to him? They walked quite a lot, but did not stumble upon a single monster. Another raid member said that he was so bored. Let them show up and give him a chance to kill them. Bai Tuan ordered him to shut up and not say the mark of death. He told everyone to be on the lookout. Lao Ju asked Yuan, Doesn't it feel cooler here? He looked at him questioningly and noticed something on the ceiling and told the others to wait. He asked why there is such a big hole. Is this a monster lair? One of the temporary allies fearfully said that there were so many of them. Small rock spiders of the third level were sitting on the ceiling. Bai Tuan told the scouts that they were just small spiders, so keep moving forward. Let them not be cowards. Do they still need money? Lao Ju agreed and said that they were just small monsters. They could easily kill them. The man said he was scared. He thought they were in a trap. Yuan noticed something else on the ceiling, and Lao Ju said that he would then go ahead to check. He wished them good luck and blood was shed. A huge spider pierced his head with its paws and raised him above the ground. Yuan was horrified at this sight, and the spiders began to surround them. The man scaredly said the name of his dead comrade and looked at the level 30 demonic mutated spider. This is an elite monster that spits poison. Bai Tuan told everyone to stay calm. Let them line up and prepare for battle. He noticed that they were elite monsters. Fortunately, they have cannon fodder as shields. If they fail, they can leave them. Su Yun said that this monster is not alone. The spiders surrounded the hunters, and the man asked the leader to save him. Bai Tuan hit the spider with his hammer and told him that he couldn't see that he was busy. If he wants to die, then go ahead, Yuan wondered. Is he throwing them? He saw a huge spider above him, which at the same moment attacked him. Yuan managed to dodge, and the spider descended to the ground. The monster growled, and Yuan was horrified. Su Yun told him to pull himself together and open the abyss system. Then he could summon a weapon and a protective item. Bai Tuan called out to the healer and said that no one cares about this monster food. Let her stay quiet and just do her job. Yuan remembered her asking if he knew how to use the abyss system. The system can summon weapons and equipment. The spider attacked and Yuan had no choice. He called for protection and repelled the spider's attack with his shield. The spider bounced off him and he called for a weapon. He can't retreat now. He attacked the spider and dealt one damage to it. He was surprised by this and thought, Does the monster have any damage? The monster attacked him again and Yuan froze in place. 
The monster was approaching, and he knew that he could not dodge. Suddenly, the weapon of one of the hunters flashed before his eyes. Bai Tuan slew the spider with his hammer and said it was the last one. He told Yuan that he was not bad. He did not expect that he had the courage to fight the elite monsters. One of the guys said the trash got the courage. Another hunter came up from behind and told the leader that all the spiders had been killed. Yuan was very surprised because he was able to survive. The guy approached the man and asked if he could get up. If not, they'll leave it here. The man sat on the floor and roared with fear. Another guy came up to them and said he was such a jerk. The guy said that they will work great. All these are fragments of the third rank and one weapon. The thief's dagger is what you need. This dagger is rare and has a level 30. It deals 197 to 277 damage with a quick attack. Yuan was surprised and thought it was a professional weapon, if he has it. Bai Tuan patted him on the back and interrupted his thoughts. He asked, He's jealous, right? Their team is lucky. They have a lot of good items from the monsters. If he doesn't die, then he will get such a weapon too. He has high hopes for it. Cold sweat ran down Yuan's face, and Bai Tuan said that they had cleared the place and ordered the others to move forward. The guy told the cannon fodder to be quick. Yuan cast a confused look at the man who kept repeating that his friend was dead. What should he do? Bai Tuan opened the map of the dungeon and said that the end of the dungeon should be ahead. And according to the map, this dungeon does not have a boss-level monster. But there is a treasure. If they are lucky, they will be able to find artifacts. The hunters were overjoyed when they heard about the artifacts, and Yuan thought that from the analysis of the groups, the chances of getting the artifact were only zero and a half out of 10,000. Each artifact has colossal power. This is a symbol of a first-class team. Bai Tuan told him not to fall into the trap, otherwise he was already inspired. He has high hopes for it. Yuan thought that was why they were using them as bait. The guy noticed something and called the leader to look at it. The whole room was strewn with gold, and in the middle stood a statue of a monster. The guy joyfully shouted that there is gold everywhere. Bai Tuan smiled and thought that now they are rich. The rest of the hunters were also happy because they will become rich. Someone said that he could find a girl to marry and live in peace for the rest of the time. The magician asked if it was an illusion. Bai Tuan replied that it's all real. The guy picked up the gold in his hands and said that there is so much gold here, probably several billion. Su Yun was overjoyed and said that she would finally be able to take a well-deserved rest. Only one Yuan did not share their enthusiasm. He wondered what was going on here. He realized that this was the boss's room and wondered if they didn't care about possible traps. The man said they would get a lot of money. Yuan looked up and bewilderedly asked them to wait. He looked at the statue and wondered, what is this huge statue? The statue began to come to life and he told them to stop. He noticed that the statue stretched its hand down and shouted that something was wrong with the gold. They need to get out of here as soon as possible. Guy asked why. Is he worried that he won't get it? At the same moment, the monster's hand crushed him, and Bai Tuan looked up in fear. He was surprised that the statue was alive and froze. The monster brought its mouth close to him, and Bai Tuan shouted that it was the boss of the dungeon. He ordered everyone to line up and prepare to attack. The magician started casting and said that he would aggro it. He conjured a raging firebolt and shot it at the monster. Bai Tuan used his crushing earthquake skill and attacked the monster. Another hunter quickly took off and rushed towards the monster. He smiled and asked to be allowed to cut off the head of the monster. But all his confidence immediately disappeared. Energy accumulated in the monster's mouth and at the same moment shot a bright beam of light at the guy. Bai Tuan was frightened because this is impossible. He died instantly. Su Yun said they couldn't. Bai Tuan asked what she meant. She said, let them run. They can't beat it. The level of this legendary monster was more than 99. It has inexhaustible power, maximum immunity, and mind control. The magician froze in place in horror, and the monster immediately grabbed him. The man begged for salvation. Seeing how the monster crushed the magician, he rushed away and screamed that he did not want to die. At the same moment, Bai Tuan flew over Yuan, which landed on the man and crushed him. Yuan turned around and his face filled with horror. Bai Tuan asked him to take him out of here. He doesn't want to die. He will give him as much money as he wants. Let him only save him. Yuan found himself helpless, face to face with death. He stared at the huge red eye of the monster and thought that no matter what he did, he would still die. He made up his mind and went on the attack on the monster. It wanted to crush him and Yuan saw the huge hand of the monster above him and realized that he would not be able to dodge it. The monster threw him away, and Yuan opened his eyes. He realized that he was flying. 
he saw another statue below and was surprised. The upper end of the statue was sharp, and at the bottom sat a petrified girl. Yuan fell and blood spurted from his body. He fell on the statue and his body was pierced through. Drops of blood fell on the statue of the girl and Yuan realized that his body was pierced through and now he would die. After a moment he is in another space, the girl called out to him and Yuan asked, Who is it? The girl tickled his head with her toes and told him to wake up quickly. She had been sleeping for so long and did not expect him to wake her up. Yuan was surprised and asked if this is a girl. In response, she said that he was a boy and asked if he wanted strength. She flew up to him and said that he was a poor, weak boy whom everyone looked down on, and yet fate chose him. Yuan was surprised that the girl was flying and remembered that he had been pierced through and through. He began to feel himself and asked where his wound had gone. The girl said she cured him as a greeting. He looked at her and asked who she was. She replied that she was his god, Atello Boros. For several centuries she was locked here and he released her. As a reward for this, he will receive the blessing of the god of fate. Each card has its own power. Let him draw one of them. Yuan wondered, each card has its own power? How many cards can he draw? One or two or more? Enough childishness. She turned to him and said that from now on, she was his master. She was surprised when she saw what he was doing and asked what he was doing. Yuan grabbed the cards and said that he would pick all the cards. The monster returned to its place and Yuan's body began to glow. Steam was coming out of the monster's mouth. It noticed the light and turned around. Yuan looked at the Atello Boros card and wondered if he was still alive. Is this the card he took earlier? Did he turn the goddess into a map? Atello Boros was surprised at the sight of this card and asked if this was her card. Why did she become a subordinate? Yeah, what's wrong with him? Who takes all the cards at once? She started insulting him and Yuan asked what he was hearing. Is Atello Boros talking to him? A monster appeared behind him, but he did not notice it and asked why there's only one card. He seemed to take all the cards. Atello Boros said that how dare he say such a thing. The cards are her strength. He took all the cards and now they have merged into one. The monster growled and Yuan immediately turned around. Atello Boros told him to quickly draw a card and reveal his artifact, Wealth of Fate. He repeated, Artifact? The card with the image of the goddess shone and split into many other cards. The monster prepared to attack and Atello Boros told Yuan to stop procrastinating. Let him quickly draw a card. He drew a card, and Atello Boros ordered her clone to rebel. On the card there was an image of the goddess of war. This is a mythical creature. The invincible god Enterinity. The card turned into a girl with wings, and Yuan was surprised by this. Is this the goddess of war? The goddess of war flew into the air, and at that moment the monster attacked. She covered herself with her wings and blocked the attack. Yuan looked at her in surprise, and the monster's gaze changed. Long tentacles sprouted from the monster's body, which reached out to the goddess of war. She masterfully dodged the tentacles. She flew up to the monster's eye and attacked. She pierced the monster through and it fell to the floor. The goddess of war smiled and began to turn back into a card. Yuan was surprised and thought, did she become a card again? The system reported that the enemy had been defeated. The system congratulated him and said he was lucky. After a while, he came out of the dungeon and stood in place. He watched the doors close and Atello Boros asked what he was thinking about. He replied that he wondered why she didn't use the divine door. She smiled irritably and said she needed to master it first. She hit him and asked if it were so that he did not take all the cards. Would she be so small now? And he didn't just take the cards. During the battle, he destroyed her deity statue. He really brings some misfortune. Now he is not even able to control the full power of the cards. When he killed that monster, he only used half of his strength. He apologized to her and said that there was something he forgot about. He wants to thank Ametlo or Tomris. She asked if he was asking for a thrashing. Her name is Atello Boros. He said it was hard to remember. Let her just let him call her Atello. If not for her, he might end up like them. She sighed and said it didn't matter. After all, it was thanks to him that she had risen and now had to accompany him for a while. But first she would take a nap. Yuan asked her to wait and said that he had many more questions. It vanished into thin air and Yuan wondered if the leader was dead. How would he get his salary? A man approached him, but he did not notice this and said that the system had just marked the location of the treasure. A bright light was directed at Yuan, and the man called out to him. Yuan was surrounded by soldiers with machine guns, ready to shoot him at any moment. The man pointed his finger at him and asked him to come with them. This man's name is Xia Wang. He is one of the four S-rank masters. He has fire characteristics and boxing skills. He said that the hunter had been discovered, and Yuan became worried. 
After a while, he was brought to the interrogation room. He said that no matter how many times he asks him, he will not answer differently. He is an ordinary city dweller who happened to be here by chance. Xia Wang got angry and grabbed Yuan and the chair below him fell to the floor. He said that they saw him come out of the dungeon of the depths, and he says that he ended up there by accident. Yuan replied that he was just walking by. The woman knocked on the door and entered the room. She asked Xia Wang, does he mind if she interrupts them? Her name is Chu. She is one of the four S-rank masters and is proficient in electric magic. She said that the report is ready. He is very weak, despite what he saw, but he is not able to clear this dungeon. Xia Wang looked at Yuan with a look full of fury, and after a second threw him away from him. Chu removed the handcuffs from him and apologized for wasting time. From now on, he is free. Yuan replied that everything was fine, and Chu said that a little later, he would have to go through the identification zone and get his license. And after that, he could go. She thanked him for his cooperation and waved to him. They said goodbye to each other, and Xia Wang asked if they would really let him go. It will be right. He is the only survivor. Chu interrupted him and said that this does not explain how he cleared the dungeon. From now on, they can call him a weakling. After a while, he went outside and the sunlight blinded him. He sighed and said that at last he sees the sunlight. Atello appeared over his head and said that she thought that if he didn't come out soon, she would have to go look for him. He looked up at her and asked why she was there. She got angry and hit him. She said her strength was with him. He asks why. Did he want to get rid of her? He's just shameless. He apologized to her and said that those people who were inside are quite strong. This is the office of the hunters. They are responsible for hunting and dungeon crawling. They are the elite among the elites. Atello said it didn't matter anymore and asked him what he plans to do next. He replied that he must first pay a debt to someone and then punish him. Time passed. He came to repay the debt and Jia Chun laughed. He said he didn't expect Mr. Shen to come. Yuan showed him the blue stone and said it was an incredibly rare blue monster heart. He doesn't know how to explain it, but he was able to get it. Jia Chun congratulated him and said that he paid off his debt and they would be happy to see him again. Yuan said that now there is something he needs to do. Jia Chun asked how they can help him. Yuan pointed his finger down and ordered him to kneel. Jia Chong asks this freak, is he really looking for his death? Lanbo swings his fist. Yuan says he shouldn't be so angry and pulls out a card, which he immediately uses. He says that now he is collecting debts. This is his first card called Thunder Shield. Those who dare to attack him will be struck by lightning. Jia Chong asks, what is this card? The guards say they have to protect the boss and kill this freak. Yuan uses the second card just as Jia Chong orders him to be killed. Yuan calls the card's skill Sandblast Strike. The system notifies that the impact of a sand explosion is capable of inflicting a blow with a baked fist and punishing the enemy. Jia Chong asks, is that sand? What is actually going on here? Sand appeared around Yuan, which scattered all the opponents. Yuan says that as he said earlier, he should kneel down and apologize. Otherwise, he does not vouch for what will happen. Jia Chong asks him to wait and asks what were those cards? This is a non-standard hunter skill. What is his specialization? Yuan says he doesn't know himself, but any card drawn becomes his power. Drawn be Now he has a new Thunderstrike card. Since he pulled it out, it's probably worth trying it on him. Jia Chong asks him to spare him and not do it. After some time in a fast food restaurant, Atello says she never thought people had a talent for cooking. She apologizes for calling him useless. Yuan says that it is only thanks to her that he survived. He's glad she likes it. Atello says that he makes this offering sincerely. Yuan says he didn't think she had such an appetite. Atello asks, did he think she was a spirit? Yuan says that only he can see her. He tried, but he can only summon cards, but for some reason there are only three of them. What's happening? Atello says that this will certainly happen because he uses her power and then returns the power back to her. Now he too can see the main cards in front of him. Yuan is surprised and asks why he has so few cards. How did he use them up so quickly? He remembers taking all the cards. Atello says he needs to calm down. In general, he can use more of her power as when summoning an immortal goddess. But due to the fact that he is lucky, after the fight, these cards are sent to the treasury, including unused cards. After he accumulates enough mana points, he can use the cards again. After regaining mana points, he should continue to go to the dungeons and hunt monsters. Yuan asks how long it will take him to recover. Atello says that his mana points will be restored by next week, but if he wishes to use the Immortal Goddess cards again, it will take him about two years. If he wants to restore mana points, he can absorb the essence of underground monsters. The main cards are good too. 
Stone Armor, Speed Boost, No Fatigue are useful cards. Yuan says they are all support cards. How will these cards help him fight underground monsters? Atello asks if he still doesn't have those cards. Yuan asks what other cards? Atello shows the card and says it's a very rare card, the Deathblow skill. Yuan says that this is the one who was able to kill the whole team. Atello says that the Treasury of Luck can be upgraded by slaying monsters. After the death of the enemy, you can put his essence into the card. Sometimes he can enter into a contract or get part of the skills. Now the main question is whether he dares to clear the dungeon with four cards in his hand. Yuan says that he has a speed buff, stamina buff, and stone armor, and his only offensive card is death blow. He bites off a piece of bread. He bites. Atello asks if he is scared. Yuan says his resources are limited. After thinking, he says that these four cards are enough for him to go to the dungeon, and now they must go to the dungeon. After some time in the sewers, Atello asks if someone died or what. Why does it stink so much in here? Yuan says that this place is underground. The sewer is the place where all the sewage flows. Is she sure that this is the right place? Does he need to cross the hole to get in? Atello agrees and says that there is a continuous flow of magic here. This is exactly the place. Yuan asks if there is a magic flow here. Even if she says so, he can't see anything. Atello says that in the deeper part of the dungeon there is a looking glass, and there is also a dimension gate. He only needs to activate the magic power called the key. Then the door will open easily. Welcome to the Sea Palace dungeon. She would leave the dungeon clearing to him. If he thinks it's too hard for him, then they can leave right now. Yuan says he understands, but where are they? Yuan notices the monster eating the fish and asks, what was it? The system window says that it is a water lizard man. His level is 20, his attack power is 18, his skills are 22, and his physique is 15. Atello says the lizard men don't look strong on their own, but they become dangerous when they gather in groups. If he hurts one, the others will immediately retaliate. Yuan says they will kill him. This so-called Thresher chooses strong and big friends to kill. Deathblow Annihilation is their battle plan. For starters, they will provoke them with words. Then when they chase after them, he will activate the speed and stamina cards. This is the perfect plan. After that, by gathering them together, the Deathblow will kill them in one go. Atello says this is a great strategy. The monster stands nearby and looks at the map. Yuan says that since they can't challenge the boss, since he might not get a single shot, they will level up first. The monster behind Yuan made a sound and charged. Yuan dodged the monster's bite and used a killing blow. The monster disappeared and left behind a card. Yuan says that this monster scared him and he thought he would die. Atello hits him on the head and says he's an idiot. He used his main skill to kill the mob. He should have used it and killed the dungeon boss since it was his only offensive skill but he decided to use his best skill on an ordinary lizard man? Yuan says that she need not worry. The death blow is not gone and they will be able to use it. Atello says he is an idiot. This card belongs to him, of course it will not disappear. It's just that now he used the full power of this card. Until the card is fully restored, this is an ordinary dummy. First, he must think about how they can get out of this situation because they are already following him. Yuan asks who is following him? The monster climbed up the mountain where they were standing. Atello asks if she hasn't talked about this before. They live in groups. She will now open the door and he must prepare to escape. Yuan refuses and says that's enough. This card is better than one that can only be used once. A group of monsters run after Yuan. He says that the sounds of the screams of these monsters are different. In the current situation, several monsters are chasing Yuan, and the others are also running after him. Atello says that sooner or later he will be driven into a trap. Yuan says that this is only his second plan for a possible development of the event. You should always have a backup plan just in case. This is his strategy. Yuan uses the deceleration card. With this yellow zone, they will move 100 times slower. Atello says that even if they slowed down, they still don't have a death blow, the only card that could kill them. Yuan asks if they don't have this card. Didn't he say that this card could be useful too? Now, she must let their lizard brother put on the stone shield. Atello says that this common lizard has become equipped. Yuan says they don't even need to get into a fight. This stone lizard should kill them all. The lizard roars and runs into the attack. It enters the yellow zone and strikes one of the monsters. Yuan, looking at the battle, says it's too slow. Atello agrees and says it's slowing down. Yuan asks why does it also affect their lizard? Atello tells this idiot that slow down is just a zone and it doesn't matter who is in it friend or foe. Yuan says that their lizard has no advantage in that case. 
Atello asks if he is really stupid or just pretending. Don't they have the opposite card? Yuan says that he completely forgot about this card. He wanted to save it for an escape and forgot. If this is the case, then the armored lizard will be able to accelerate very much. Lizard Yuan accelerated and immediately dealt with all the monsters. The system notifies you of the receipt of many different materials. Atello says that there is not only a magic crystal, but also many other wonderful things. Yuan says that with this speed, they will soon be able to infuse the cards with magic. Atello says it worked well. Yuan says that of course it is because he is very strong. Atello smiled and thinks things are about to take an interesting turn. She thought he was a fool who relies on simple luck to live a little longer, but she did not expect him to be so resourceful and able to combine cards so skillfully. Whether he's smart or brave doesn't matter. What else can he come up with? The yellow zone is destroyed. Yuan says that the skill seems to have expired. Atello says that he cannot worry and look around. Those lizards that survived are oppressed by fear. The armored lizard roars and all the monsters scatter in horror. Yuan asks if he won and got new cards. He looks at the cards and asks why he has so many lizard cards. What's happening? Why did the armored lizard start to shine? All lizard cards have been consumed. The armored lizard from the past has evolved. So this is his new power? The system notifies that the armored lizard has completed its evolution. Having reached the highest rank of an armored dragon, the racial skills of dragon blood are obtained top class regeneration, durability, elemental armor. Atello asks, Did he get a new look, an armored dragon? She starts laughing out loud. Yuan asks, What happened? Why is she laughing? Is this card weak? Atello apologizes and says she didn't expect someone to create a new look just by being creative. It was very interesting, so she couldn't help it. Sometime later, Atello says top class regeneration, durability, elemental armor are very good skills. Yuan says that if the armored dragon has acquired all these skills, although they are all defensive, Atello says that the armored dragon is what he is able to summon, which also means that his soul is bound to him. In this way, the skills of the armored dragon will be added to its body. Yuan says he is confused and his head is splitting. Is he connected to the soul of a lizard? Atello says she expected this. Even if he is not able to use all the skills, thanks to the armored dragon, he will not be easy to kill. Yuan says that he is beginning to understand, but he has a question. From the moment a lizard's soul became attached to him, he wouldn't become a lizard human or something like that, would he? Atello laughed very loudly. Yuan asks why does he feel like he's being made fun of? Atello says that his strength is the reason for her presence. His real soul is connected to her god. This mortal must feel flattered. Now they must postpone this conversation because they have reached their destination. This is the deepest point of the dungeon, the boss room. Yuan asks if he needs to fight this thing. Atello says it's just a statue and this freak's personality won't let him fight people. Yuan says he'd better be careful as he was already killed by that monster statue the last time. By the way, she just said that freak. She knows this god. Atello says she doesn't know anyone who could be as ugly and shameless as this frog. Yuan thinks it sounds like they know each other. He says this is where those lizards fled to. It looks like they are still wary of the armored lizard. If they block his path, then he must let them feel the power of his new card. Yuan stops and hears strange noises. Behind Yuan, there was already a tall monster who swung his weapon. Yuan looks behind him and Atello says he has to dodge. Yuan dodges the attack and says that it looks like he is the boss of this dungeon. The monster speaks in an incomprehensible language. Yuan asks what is he talking about. He does not understand a single word of his, but he can definitely say that he is evil. He warns him not to fix his attention on him. Yuan uses the card and an armored dragon appears behind the boss. The dragon strikes the head of the boss. Yuan says that as he expected, it won't be that easy. The dungeon boss foresaw the attack and bit the dragon's hand. Yuan asks if he knew what he was up to. The armored dragon should return faster and not attack head on. Atello says it's not that simple. Yuan asks what does that mean? Why is it different from regular bosses? Atello says this lizard is smart, so it's a little different. So it's a this boss has a high intelligence. This monster is a hero class. The armored dragon says he's giving up his hand. The dragon stabs and hits the boss's eye but loses its arm. Yuan is very surprised by this and tells the armored dragon that he has lost his arm. Atello says that the card has its own consciousness and he made the decision himself. Had he given up his hand in order to survive? The boss says he will kill him. He brandishes the weapon in different directions and says that he will kill them for what he did to his eye. The boss makes a very loud roar. 
UN asks if the fog cleared because of that battle cry. Atello says it's not just a battle roar, but a hero skill called leadership. The lizards that were in this room came out of their hiding places and surrounded them. Atello says she found out something. This is the place of the Sea Palace. This is the territory of the Sea God, and also the territory of this divine freak. Yuan asks what is she trying to say. Atello says what she means is that she and this freak are alike. He was sealed in this statue, and the one they fought was the boss's guard. If he wishes to awaken the boss, then all he has to do is destroy the vessel. But I think about this freak, her body is covered with goosebumps. Yuan apologizes for this. Atello says the good news is that the lucky treasury has been fully restored. Yuan tells the armored dragon that he trusts the boss to him. The dragon makes a sound. Yuan says he can start. The dragon rushes to attack the boss guard. Yuan runs towards the crowd of lizards and uses the first card, Speed Boost. The guard says they have to stop him. Yuan accelerates very strongly and runs past the monsters. The guard says they can't let him get there. The dragon getting close to the guard says that his opponent is him. The dragon kicks the monster's head and says it will kill it. The guard tells this damned brat that he will kill him quickly. The guard yells that he must die and brandishes his weapon. The dragon dodges and says that while he is here, he will not let him get close to his master. The dragon jumps up and delivers a strong kick to the opponent's head. The guard keeps hitting with the weapon but can't hit. The guard says he must die. The dragon jumps back and looks back and says that he must protect his master. Yuan runs very fast and tells the god of greed that he got to him. He feels something strange and falls down and says that their business is bad, and his body is weakening. Atello asks how he feels. Is he alive? Yuan asks what's going on. His body is not listening. Atello says that he should get up faster because those lizards are already coming here. The lizards run towards them screaming loudly. Atello says he knows the reason. This is because his body used the speed boost and ran out of limits, so he fell down. Yuan asks, simply put, is it because her cards are difficult to use? Yuan uses the treasury of good luck, blow of the north wind. Atello says it's the north wind. Yuan says it looks like a good card. Atello says that this card summons a strong tornado, and no matter who it is, be it glow rats or even big dragons, they will all be blown away. But there is one peculiarity. Yuan asks, what's the other feature? Atello says that this northerly wind only has a blowing effect, but no damage. Yuan tosses the card and asks, why is it a support card again? Atello says it's because he's too greedy and took all the cards at once. If he had only drawn one card then, he could have summoned the goddess of war whenever he felt like it. Yuan asks what would happen if he drew a bad card. Atello says that in this case, too, there would be nothing to worry about. Her cards are backed up for beginners. He should quickly find a way to free this freak. Yuan says that when he approached, he realized that he was a little big. By the way, why does the north wind spin the monsters over their heads? It's still blowing and it's not very pleasant. Atello says that the north wind has a long duration, but its weakness is that it does not have a specific direction and blows in a random direction. The boss's guard is shouting something. Yuan asks, is that a guard's howl? He turns around and sees that the boss's guard is holding an armored dragon in his hand. The guard squeezes his body and throws him back. Atello tells a worried Yuan that he must be careful because he is coming. The guard quickly runs towards Yuan and Atello. Yuan asks if he can use this card again. Atello asks him to wait and asks what card is in his hand. The boss is about to attack. Yuan says that he uses the speed boost one more time. Yuan's body is suffering greatly. Atello tells this idiot that if he forcefully uses this card again, then his body will not survive. The guard strikes with great force but Yuan dodges and pushes off the guard's head and says that stats and status are not important, especially now. It's all about willpower. Atello says he uses the lizards as jumping sticks. Are there new cards coming out? High above the ground, when the guard raises his head, Yuan uses the boost for the third time and kicks the boss's statue to pieces. Atello asks Yuan if he is alive. Yuan says that thanks to the support skills of the armored dragon, he barely managed to survive. Atello says he didn't have to take the risk. They could just open the teleportation gate and retreat. Yuan says that someone like him who lives at the bottom will not miss a single chance to become stronger. It's time for the god of greed to come out. The boss guard is about to attack. At this point, the god of greed says not enough, not enough, and never enough. Not enough money, not enough fun, not enough sleep. The guard stops and looks at it. The god of greed says that he lacks everything and eats his own guard. Atello says he is disgusting as always. Yuan asks, was it the power of a god? 
Atello says that he shouldn't be so surprised since he himself uses the power of a god. The god of greed looks at them in bewilderment and moves closer. He says he didn't expect it to be her. Yuan points to himself and asks if he's talking about him. The god of greed says that he has been waiting for centuries and his dream is finally fulfilled. It is very touching. Yuan says he's too close. The god of greed says that the revered goddess Atello Boros is his beloved. Atello asks if he can speak after taking his human form. His disgusting breath hits her right in the nose. The god of greed says that as he expected, she is still the same toxic goddess. She never changes. He will immediately change form. Yuan asks if he's a fan. Atello says that he should shut up, and if he does it again, she will no longer help him. The god of greed tells Otello Atello that there he is. Atello asks to stop changing her name. The god of greed uses the transfiguration skill. Yuan opens his eyes and is surprised. The god of greed says that he succeeded and successfully transformed. Atello asks where does he get this look from. The god of greed says that this body he bargained for in a fair trade and now he is using it. Not bad, right? Atello says that in general this is more pleasant compared to the previous one. Compared to Yuan asks if he could put his feet away. The god of greed gets up and says that he has already forgotten about him. Who is this guy? Atello asks Yuan if he's okay. Yuan says that he is now suffering from a side effect and needs to rest for a while. The god of greed says it's a man. He figured it out, so he's an Atello contractor? Atello asks, did he decide to immediately reveal his true appearance? The god of greed asks how much grace has he received from the treasury of fate? Atello says he can pass and not dream. The treasury of destiny won't give him a single card. The god of greed asks little brother if he's okay? He remembers that he saved him from that lizard, right? Yuan says that he is actually the one who freed him. The god of greed says it will happen again. What he saw shocked Yuan so much that he even fell down. The god of greed has released his true form and says that he saved him and wants him to repay his debt. Yuan asks, is he the one who saved him? The god of greed leans towards him and asks how he is that he must transfer his power of the treasury of fate as payment for a debt. Atello says that he must stop because it is not permissible for a god to use force to intimidate ordinary people. The god of greed laughs and says she shouldn't be angry. When he gets his cards from the treasury of fate, they will make a contract. The owner of this body is still alive, when the time is right, if they work together. He didn't speak and laughed. Atello asks what kind of joke is this? Even if she is thrown to the edge of the universe, she still does not want to have anything to do with him. The god of greed laughs and says that although he respects her, trade is trade. If he saved his life, then he must pay. Yuan says that since he wants to repay the debt, they can make a deal. He wants his cards, doesn't he? What can he give him? The god of greed says that he turns out to be a brave, even too brave person. Does he really think he has something worthy to negotiate with him? Yuan says that although he can't give him everything, he can give him some cards to satisfy him. The god of greed asks, so many cards? Atello says he can't do that. Yuan says that if he wants them, he should come and get them. Atello says that he is the god of greed. He can't bargain with him because he'll suck everything out of him. Yuan says that she should provide it to him. The god of greed asks if they are talking about it. Are they interested in the Atello Boros method of recuperation? She doesn't want fate to dominate, does she? After she gets her powers back, Yuan will also become stronger. He will tell him the method of restoring strength for two cards and the fee for saving one more card. Just three cards makes sense, doesn't it? Atello says this deal isn't fair and she won't accept it. Yuan asks if he just wants treasure cards. Atello asks, cards from the treasury? Is it really? Yuan says that he will give him seven cards, but he will promise not to lie to him. How does he look at it? The god of greed is surprised by so many cards. Yuan says that he will take seven cards from the treasury and give them to him. Yuan held out his finger and the guy said, seven cards is more than three cards for a total of four cards. He did not believe his luck and already reached for it. Yuan thought about it. He killed a few lizards earlier. Now he understood what to do with it. After that thought, he smirked and said, Does he want to intimidate him? It is not so easy. Atello Boros hinted to him not to be overconfident. But suddenly the guy was dumbfounded and said, No, they need to wait. This is strange. Why does he suddenly want to give her as many as seven cards? The addition should not consist of one more card or twice six cards. Why seven cards? What does it mean? Why is he going to give her exactly seven cards? She stared at him with a hostile and questioning look. Yuan, looking down at her, responded with an arrangement that it was because, but he did not know what to answer her better, so that the answer was appropriate and thought that he just wanted to fuse the lizard cards. He didn't expect him to be so perceptive. 
The guy, because of his long thoughts and lack of an answer, began to call him a scammer, because this is some kind of special scheme. This must be the blueprint. What does seven mean? Seven cards activate something? People are smart. The hero was dumbfounded and had no reason to voice it. He started screaming that she needed an answer and called him a little man. If he is going to outwit her, he promises her worst curse will fall on him. Yuan did not understand what to do in this situation and became nervous. And at that moment, Atello Boros came to his aid, who said that he simply gives him those cards that he is not able to use. After these words, she added that this guy is a weakling. Many cards in the treasury are useless to him. Yuan was in a state of shock at Atello's remarks and asked if it was okay for him to say that. The hero guessed and spoke, so that's why, after which he agreed to pick up these cards without any problems. Yuan was surprised that it worked. Atello said that there was no need to be so scared. From the very beginning, the only thing he thought about was the treasure cards. If it did not violate the rules of the deal with the god, he will not be punished. The guy noticed their negotiations among themselves and said that if they were going to reduce the number of cards, then he did not agree to this. Atello, hearing these statements, whispered into Yuan's ear carefully that this guy is not only greedy, but also stupid, just that he was deceived. So next time he will be more careful and careful. Yuan turned to the guy and told him that he was right. The guy smirked and replied, What a pity that he has no talent, but he will help get rid of his garbage and laughed. Yuan laid out the cards on his hands and handed it to the guy's hands, noting that there were seven cards as they agreed. The guy smiled a hostile smile and said that today and beyond, he is also a god who owns the power of fate. He laid out the cards and was not delighted with such an advantage. After he examined them, he decided to take a deeper look at it. But suddenly the smile fell off his face, and he looked in bewilderment at the spread of the cards, after which he wondered, Is this a lizard? Why in the treasury of destiny does he have this? Yuan touched the guy's shoulder and apologized for bothering him, after which he smiled a sinister smile and asked, He got the cards, didn't he? Atella was delighted with the resulting event and added that this is a real fate card. The guy got worried and replied that it was not fair. It is not right. Atello asked him with a smile on her face, didn't he say? Fate cards were given to him. He can't break the contact rules. Yuan added that the deal was just like he said. Fair, right? The guy was disappointed by this deception and called them devils several times, after which he began to shout how cruel they were, and that they were worse than devils after all. His cry was heard everywhere. They ended up in the middle of a cave along with some of the monsters that were standing in front of them. The guy standing in the arms and surrounded by monsters asked, Did he say these guys can evolve into one like him? Yuan replied that everything is right. He should give them love, and in this case they will return the same to him. They will grow up the way he wants them to be. The guy started screaming that he had suffered losses from this deal and would not pay twice next time. He will show him the true evolution of lizards. After these words, he sat on one of the lizards and rushed past them with his fist raised up. Atello said that now they have to pick up the energy of the dungeon, did not ask if he knows this place for sure. Yuan replied that he knows where the energy dungeon is, but there is a problem. If he remembers correctly, this dungeon is guarded by the hunter's office. Atello asked him again, Hunter's office? Are they the ones he was caught before? Those who use the name of justice to protect people and cut off people's ways to get money? Exploration of a high-ranked dungeon is also their responsibility. Yuan added that she needed their approval before entering the dungeon, as those who didn't get approval were called illegal bandit hunters. Suddenly, a red-haired man appeared in front of Yuan. It was a Xia Yu boxer. He looked at Yuan with a sinister look. Flames were visible in his clenched hand. Xia Yu called Yuan an asshole. Yuan was frightened by the appearance of this person and said, What a horror! Xia Yu began to stretch his hands and fingers, saying that they met again, and that he was an asshole. Will he still claim to know nothing about martial arts? Yuan tried to stop him and asked how he got in here. But suddenly, Chu appeared in front of them and started asking if the manager of this dungeon needs permission to enter. They found an ancient magical stream, so they decided to go check it out. They started to approach Yuan with weapons in their hands. Yuan said that it was familiar to them, but before he could finish the sentence, Chu got into their conversation again and said that they had met again. Brother, last time you were too hasty and did not introduce yourself, her name is Chu, and this one's name is Jia Yu. Yuan widened his eyes in surprise and asked if she was that Miss Secretary. She replied that she is also a hunter and basically stops this guy from going berserk. Sometimes she does the job of a secretary. 
Xia Yu asked not to waste time chatting with him. Yuan decided to create a casual atmosphere and said, In that case, Miss Chiu, let her help stop Sir Xia Yu. He leaves first. They started yelling at him that he was an asshole. This response greatly frightened Yuan and made him nervous. Xia Yu created a huge flame in the form of a fire lion and said that when they came, there was no trace of the bosses left. Why would someone like him with a low status be able to clear the dungeon? He approached Yuan more and more and looked at him with eyes shrouded in rage. Yuan asked the flame, Tiger? Bosom reported that it was a top-rank spirit. Unexpectedly, this man made a contract from a top-rank spirit. Chu saw how tense the situation was and told Xia Yu to take it easy and not kill him. Xia Yu replied that it depends on his strength. He took a step that left the ruined pieces of the path and told Yuan to let him know how strong he was. After these negotiations, he rushed to run straight at his opponent and shouted that he was a stupid brat. It was such a fast movement that Yuan didn't immediately realize what exactly was happening in front of him. But suddenly, it is blocked by a monster that has been next to them all this time. This creature repels the attack, which Xia Yu was very surprised and thought, This monster is protecting him? Does his flame disappear upon contact with this? And this is interesting. The tiger rises, makes new attacking movements and screams. Let this little lizard show what it's made of. And Xia Yu again strikes several times, but the monster still deflects and dodges it. Chu, who was watching from afar, put her hand to her chin and thought, although she asked Xia Yu to be easy with him, but surprisingly this monster is immune to Xia Yu's flames. The Xia Yu spirit is Flame Emperor, although it gives flames that can be seen everywhere, but ordinary fire burns a person at a high temperature, and the flame of Flame Emperor uses the will. Come into contact with which it will not go out without the will of Xia Yu. This lizard is surprisingly the type of monster that has immunity to flames. During this fight, there are shouts that this monster is so strong, the armored dragon can fight this for many rounds. He did not think it was so strong. Yuan tries to run from place to place, and Atello says that it is not the armored dragon that is stronger, and their skills block his ability. The ability of the enemy is the flame that gives him the spirit, and the armored dragon element is what spirits hate the most. Once again, there are screams with a smirk. Isn't this their chance to win? Atello adds that even taking this into account, the difference in my powers is too great. Yuan is still looking puzzled at the fight. This man is stronger than the big lizard, much stronger. But the lizard is incredibly trying to overcome the enemy and touch his flame. What a horror. When the lizard reached out close enough to the opponent, the enemy attacked it, and the monster fell to the ground with a crash. Xia Yu said that it was not bad. He did not expect it to have endurance and told the monster to get up to continue the battle further. His gaze was filled with rage and excitement. He wanted to defeat the enemy again. Chu started calling Sir Xia Yu to remind him that he forgot their goal, and asked him to quickly ask him how he was able to clear the dungeon. Xia Yu stopped and said exactly. Yuan ran up to the monster, worried about the state of it, and asked, Armored Dragon, how is it? How is it feeling? Xia Yu shouted that Yuan is a jerk, and what he wants to know right now is what is his relationship with the lizard. Yuan understood his gaze on him, and Xia Yu again asked why this monster risked his life to save him. Who is he? He stepped closer and pointed his finger at him, asking about it. Yuan thought, his goal is not to grab me? He figured out their motive if keeping him because of an illegal raid, and to understand why a weakling like him was able to clear the dungeon. What should he do? Should he tell them about the treasury of fate? Well, what will they do with him when they know everything if he tells them? Atello said that's what he thinks. Let him secure himself, he can't tell them about them. This was a warning to Yuan. Atello added that even if they were tied, he couldn't be sure they wouldn't take his cards. He asked her, then what should he do? He doesn't want a bounty on his head or a wanted poster with his face hanging all over the streets. And she answered him that then let him just confess what he had done. It's just something to be locked up for a year and a half. Up for Yuan was surprised by these words and said that this is not what he wants. Xia Yu again addressed him as a brat and asked him what was he muttering under his breath. And after that, he came closer and started shouting that it doesn't matter. Because anyway, he and this lizard will go with him. They will thoroughly interrogate him when they return. And after saying that, he tried to grab Yuan with one hand. The system window informs that the skill Regeneration of the Highest Class is activated. Suddenly, the monster rises from its place and extends its hand to the enemy. The system window reports that the elemental armor skill absorbing fire elements is reaching its limit. Xia Yu was at a loss as he tried to defend himself against the monster's attacks and stay afloat. Yuan looked at the lizard, opened his mouth, and said that this is an armored dragon. 
an irreversible process of improving the skill of elemental armor with a chance of obtaining a new skill, suddenly the lizard turns into a red monster, which is very frightening to others and everyone is surprised. Did it turn red? Atello thought, Wow! This monster devoured the village of flames and evolved again? Shia Yu shouted. Did it absorb his flame and turn red? He was furious about the events and said that the monster now looked like a lobster, after which he tried to strike again with one hand clenched into a fist. He was wondering, not only did the monster turn red, this monster's speed rose three times as much. Chu, noticing the monster's transformation, thought it was incredible. Monsters can evolve. This monster has its own consciousness, the desire to protect a person. So this is the answer she was looking for? Yuan found the zone of the unknown goddess and was captured. When it was first opened, the dungeon had an A rank or the highest difficulty. There was a lot of gold inside. Then they decided to almost talk and take all the treasures for themselves. Also, they discovered that the ancient demon layer could respawn. It was difficult to immediately upgrade to S rank, and they all kept it a secret. Part of the information was leaked due to a group of illegal spies. They tried to stop them, but it was already too late. After the group entered, none of them were seen again, with the exception of Yuan, where the main participants were rank A, but only he survived. There is only one explanation here. Yuan received some unknown power in the dungeon, thus he was able to clear the dungeon. The fight was still going on. Everyone was trying to win and defeat the opponent standing in front. Xia Yu was interesting, very interesting. His face was both sinister and joyful at the same time. He really wanted to win, and thought that for a long time he had not met such an opponent, he was only testing it, and now the monster would see his true strength. Xia Yu made some movement with his hand, decided to try this skill with this punch and end it all. Pushing off the ground with all his strength, he jumped up above the monster and tried to overcome it in the air, thanks to the increase in speed. He grabbed one of the cards. Yuan saw this and yelled at the monsters to evade at all costs. Armored Dragon! The monster landed, plunging its claws into the ground, after which it jumped up again and began to dodge Xia Yu's attacks. Their fierce battle never ended. Everyone watched with fear and incredible expectation of how it would all end. Yuan looked at what was happening in front of his eyes and said that he was able to split the ground in the dungeon with one hand? Is this guy really human? At this time, Xia Yu was already heading towards them with a pile of stones from a collapsed dungeon. When Xia Yu was able to split the ground in the dungeon with one hand, the fragments from this failed dungeon were all over the place, and there was also a lot of light everywhere from the incredible strength of the opponent who was trying to get to the monster in Yuan. When Xia Yu jumped up, he started screaming, Brat! What did he just do? And after asking the question, he crushed the pieces in his hands. And he began to scream, What the heck? What have you done with this lizard? Interfered with the struggle between two strong men? He was beside himself with rage, and Atello noticed this, and covered her mouth in her surprise. Yuan was also a little scared, and the monster just smirked. Atello said that if it comes to that, if a man fights a man, then first of all, everyone should be men. Yuan fully agreed with her and answered, That's it. Then he stopped and asked if she was hinting that he was not a man. She stopped and said that no one here says anything about him. She means an armored dragon. Doesn't he see? It's not a dragon, it's a dragon. He asked, How can one understand something here? She added, By the way, apparently the dragon fell in love with him. For him she even managed to evolve. She is afraid that after a while she will turn into a human. Yuan cleared his throat and said, Well, you have to wait if you like it, but that's okay. What else is love? They're not even the same race, Xia Yu said with his teeth showing that it doesn't matter what race. Important feelings between both parties. He not only interfered with his battle, but also ignored him. So apparently until he breaks a couple of casts for him, he will not become serious. Xia Yu got up and began to warm up again, after which there was a sharp jerk and he rushed to attack his enemies. They started shouting that a ferocious tiger is coming down the mountain. Yuan was dumbfounded and there was absolutely nothing in his mind but suddenly there was a thunderclap, and Yuan collided with Xia Yu in battle. Xia Yu rushed straight at Yuan, but suddenly Xia Yu fell right into the fragments. They were very frightened. Yuan said that there was lightning in the dungeon. Atello added that it was top-level lightning magic. The monster tried to say something again. Atello wondered why there are only masters of the spirit here. She must be a contractor too? Chiu came closer to them, stood in front of the card, and said that Xia Yu needed to stop being rowdy. Chiu was next to the body of Xia Yu and began to repeat that she was doing with such force, it was necessary to put another one. This one was not a tenant. 
Chiu put her hand to her forehead and wondered what should I do with him now. Every time the same thing. After all, they agreed that they would just check these guys, but what did he do? He got up from his knees, smoke was coming out of his torn tissue, he was covered in abrasions, and said that it was not necessary to hit him with lightning. She replied that one of his blows, this boy would not have a wet place left. Yuan heard their conversation and asked, what does it mean to check? And anyway, what right do they have to arrest them? As long as he insists that he entered the labyrinth by accident, they have no right to detain. There are so many outlaw hunter groups outside, and they absolutely do not care. They need him? And even if he tells them what he needs, it should not concern them. Chu replied to Yuan that she understood everything. Apparently, he did not quite understand what they were doing in the hunter organization. Yuan said that they have monopolized the labyrinth and are reaping the benefits. What is incomprehensible here? Chu shouted, monopolized. But they have the same control. They appeared because they were needed simultaneously in all the affairs of this labyrinth, to ensure the safety of researchers, hunters, testers, evaluate, divide into classes, give a suitable task for people, reduce the dangers of entering the labyrinth to the maximum. In the ruins, there are a bunch of different unknown sources of resources and the strongest monsters. In addition to resources, inside there are the most valuable relics that were long ahead of their time, the so-called artifacts. Artifacts give unimaginable power. If they don't look after it, then what will happen if these artifacts fall into the hands of bad people? They not only have to protect them, but also have to investigate incidents that may be associated with artifacts. Determine if the suspect is dangerous. Can he use his powers to the fullest? It is obvious that he received something from the unnamed goddess. The lizard he controls is proof of that. They just looked at each other. She is very sorry, but she can only give him two choices and has shown two fingers. One is a strict punishment for not admitting guilt. They will do it. And the second they will return, drink tea and chat. Well, after his confession, they hope that he will use his artifact for good and join them. Or can they have another round with this big guy and him, and then he'll think again? After these words, she laughed. He replied that no, better not, uncle. Suddenly, a red-haired girl appeared in front of them, who said that she would not believe these guys if she were him. Yuan looked at her and thought, this is a secret dungeon who's stuck again. The appearance of a new person excited each participant in the conversation. They asked who it was. She pointed her finger at Yuan and called him a boy with fate cards, and that she was his real partner. They must resist looting dungeon artifacts for love and freedom. It's their fox. Sweet and beautiful Xiao Hong enters the stage with brilliance. Under her guidance, she will help him free himself from the clutches of the vile organization of hunters, and called him brother, winking at him. Everyone present fell silent in a stupor. Yuan thought that this fox-eared girl is real? Atello said so he's on these. Chu asked again, fox? She felt like she had heard about it somewhere before. Xia Yu put her word into this conversation and said that he likes cats more, but he also likes foxes. After these words, Chu was overwhelmed with emotions. She shouted, but who cares about his hobbies and called him a blockhead? Hong said, well, dear hunters, she takes Yuan with her and hopes that the others do not mind this act. Xia Yu got angry and shouted, What else? Only over his corpse. Chu looked at him with sad eyes. Hong looked at him and said, Then let him be. And after these words, she flew to meet him. Xia Yu pushed Chu away and shouted to be more careful, but he would deal with her and said that she was brave and offered to see what she was capable of in the end. Hong got closer to him and said, Illusion. Xia Yu got scared and asked what? She just laughed and shouted that she asked everyone to see the beautiful performance performed by Xiao Hong, the rampage of cunning foxes. After these words, she made a lot of sudden movements and it turned out to be too much for Xia Yu, because of which he did not understand what was happening and said what kind of illusions these are. Nothing can be distinguished at all. While her clowns surrounded them, she approached Yuan, the monster, and Atello. Yuan noticed this and started yelling that this girl was coming towards them, his monster had already taken the attacking position, but Yuan yelled, Stop! Armored dragon! Do not do this! This monster turned around, and Hun was only amused by the fact that it got angry. She surrounded each of the contestants there, causing Yuan to remark on her work. He wondered what kind of movement such. How could she get past the armored dragon so easily? She crept closer and closer to him and said again that she had come to pick him up and called him brother. He asked what? She showed him her paw, and he thought, wow, this is a real huge paw. Among the company of Xia Yu and Chu, there were exclamations that the situation was bad, because she had already reached him. She crept closer to him and whispered to him to relax and leave the rest to her. 
Xia Yu started screaming in anger that he wouldn't let them escape and ran to grab them as soon as possible. Hong held the monster by the shoulder and told it that it was coming with them, and they turned around in the other direction. Xia Yu started screaming for her to return them, but suddenly the portal she created quickly opened and closed, and Xia Yu did not have time to do anything. He looked into the sky and wondered what? Where did they go? Chu also looked around thoughtfully. Suddenly she thought, Red Fox. After some time, Yuan and Hong were walking around the city along some kind of canal. They were talking to each other. He began to discuss, finally got out, but now he is definitely a criminal, to which Hong replied that he should be calm because he has her. He returned to her and said, By the way, who she was after all? What was she doing in that dungeon? Are these paws and ears real? How does she know about fate cards? She has a boyfriend? She just laughed and told him to wait because he had too many questions at once. Atello, who was behind them, said that actually she would also like to ask one question. Can she see her? The fox looked up and Atello said, That's why which of the spirits sent her? The fox who came from another world. Yuan was completely surprised by what was happening and asked what? After some time, two guards with weapons were standing in front of the entrance to the high-rise building, guarding it. Some commander shouted nearby, quietly. He was greeted by his subordinates and wished him a good day. It was Mr. Chun. The gentleman approached one of the soldiers, looked him straight in the eyes, and asked something, which the soldier answered, Yes, he is. How much is left until the end of the working day? Odin and soldiers asked again, What? But he had just arrived, hadn't he? Lunch break just ended. Shouts were heard that Lady Chu ordered not to let him go no matter what. It's been a week now that he hasn't come. Chun said, Oh my God. Okay, so this room was occupied and he pointed to a nearby doorway to the room and entered. If anyone is looking for him, then let them say that he is on an operational mission and he released them, assuming that he would go to sleep, probably. Someone said it's him. In this room, Xia Yu and Chu were already waiting for his visit. Xia Yu apologized to him and said that this room was already taken. Chu added that work is business and fun is an hour. And he answered in that case he does not want to interfere. He then remembered that he had one unfinished business. Xia Yu hugged him by the shoulders and said, They haven't seen each other for so long and he's already leaving, it's so uncivilized. He loves these missions of his. Good luck, they just need such a hard-working opera as he. Chun listened to this statement and shook his head negatively, because in these couple of days he needs to hand in a ton of reports. Chu called Chun and Xia Yu and called them both two idiots who seemed to have forgotten who was doing all the reporting for them. They were a little scared of her reaction and couldn't say anything, but suddenly Chun shouted that there was no difference. To be an opera means to work overtime, and he is forbidden to work more than necessary. Why can't you just take and give him a salary for lying and getting high? Chu says that the new owner of the artifact has appeared, and after this information, Chun's face turned sad. He got scared and asked, So she wants him to go fight to the death again with a terribly strong opponent? Chu replied that no, because this owner has not awakened yet. Suddenly a bell rang from a new message, and because of which the sound sounded that this was work for the collective farmers. You can't waste your life at work. Chu said that she sent him the data. And by the way, can he already change this stupid notification sound to normal? Object Yuan, powerless, was recently recruited by the Hagon organization, entered the ruins of the Nameless Goddess. It's safe to say that the ruins were attacked. Being the only survivor, he received an artifact from a Nameless Goddess. The first and Xia Yu have already encountered him, his abilities are very specific, but so far he cannot be used by them to the fullest. We need to bring him here so that in the future no one can deceive him and turn against them. After all, they are contract soldiers. It will be easier for the two of them to find a common language, right? Now the strongest, Chun. Meanwhile, Hong was explaining to Yuan that the hunter's office was only looking for him because he didn't have a license, and in that case she would help him get it. He replied that everything is correct, but he is the reason for the absence of this license. Hong replied, It's okay. He just needs to rely on her. Once they show how strong they are, he can get his license right away. Yuan suggested that it was a team competition. Even so, as far as he knows, teams of three to five people will compete in three rounds to two wins, right? There are only two of them here, by the way. There are especially many people today. Xiao Hong said that she would go to sign them up for the competition and let them wait here for a while. Atello asked if there is no fox race in their world. Isn't it dangerous for her to walk the streets like that? Although Yuan does not understand what race of foxes she is talking about and what kind of other world is there, but such a look as that of Xiao Hong is called the labyrinth syndrome. For most guys or hunters who have been working in the labyrinth for a long time, 
From time to time, something strange can grow on the body. Perhaps this is due to the increase in their skills after defeating the monster. This does not affect everyday life in any way, so people gradually got used to and accepted these oddities. Atello seems to have understood. After defeating a monster, they absorb the remnants of their souls. Usually, people who have an unstable psyche or a high probability of compatibility with the soul of a monster undergo physical changes. The appearance of this girl is her original appearance. She does not belong to this world. Yuan remembered that she was also bound to the spirit contract, but why can't they see her spirit then? He only knows that she wants to return to her world, and that's it. Atello explains that because of the labyrinth's unstable power, she was transported to this world. She lost touch with her spirit. The labyrinth is the space between the worlds. Yuan doesn't care about this labyrinth at all. A joyful Xiao Hong yells that they have received permission to participate in the competition.